one, it reads Carmen is playing with blocks. She arranges stacks of blocks so that each successive level of blocks has one fewer block than the level below it and the top level has one block. Such a stack with three levels is shown below. So we have the stack of blocks shown below here. Carmen wants to make such a stack with 12 levels. Question, how many blocks would she use to build this stack? Okay, so we have a three level stack of um, blocks here and she desires to build um, a stack of blocks that has 12 levels. So how many blocks will there be there? All right, so to solve this problem, we're going to use three different uh, methods and whichever one you, you feel is much more um, acceptable to you, you can go ahead and employ that method when you are um, attacking problems of this nature on the ACT, okay? So the first method is the basic method, the basic of the basic method, which is just counting. It involves just counting the number of blocks that um, are used. All right, so let's write this down. Method one is just your simple counting. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some patterns that manifest themselves um, when we are uh, making use of this method of counting, all right? Okay, so we have the blocks here. Um, for the first level, level one, how many blocks are there? For level one, you just have one block. Let me represent it with a dot, okay? So for level one, you have one block. How about level two? For level two, you have two blocks. All right, one, two, two blocks. And then for level three, you have three blocks. One, two, three. So what do you notice about the number of blocks and the levels? They, pra they practically match each other, right? So the number of blocks that um, are present in each level, this is basically the consecutive numbers. You're counting one, two, three, you're counting your consecutive numbers. So if we follow the pattern all the way down to level 12, what do you expect there to be? You're gonna have one, two, three, you have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? So that would be the number of, block, uh, of blocks you have for and the respective levels 11 and 12. All right, so for the basic counting method, all you just do is you just add all these numbers together, okay? So we're going from level one all the way down to level 12, which we have um, 11 blocks, of course, and that will be your total, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and add this, but I'm gonna use a specific pattern in adding these consecutive numbers, and then you see if um, you can see a pattern manifesting itself, okay? We have a total of 12 numbers, 12 consecutive numbers that we're adding. What if I proceed to add the middle two, okay? So if I divide 12 by two, I have six. So we have six on top, six on the bottom. If I add six and seven, what do I get? Six plus seven is 13. All right, let's, let's pick the next two. What if I add five and eight? Five plus eight is what? 13. Isn't that interesting? How about 4? Four? 4 and 9. 4 plus 9. What is 4 plus 9? 13 again. What do you think is going to happen if I keep adding all the way out? It's always going to be 13. So 3 plus 10 is 13. An interesting way to add consecutive numbers, right? So you have 11 and 2. 11 plus 2 is 13, and then lastly we have 12 and 1. All right, so whenever you're adding consecutive numbers, if there are even a number of them, um, this pattern will always manifest um, itself. If you have odd numbers, you just have to start, omit the middle one, and then just add around it, and you have the sum equal to, to that. So in this case, you have 13 here also. All right, so how many 13s do you think there are going to be? Well, there were 12 numbers and we divided them into two pairs, right? So we have pairs and each pair add up to 13. How many pairs are we gonna have? We're gonna have six pairs times 13. So we're gonna add 13 six times or just simply compute 13 times six. 13 times six is um, 60 plus 18, which is 78. And that's the answer, um, option letter B. 
All right, so this is method one, which is just counting. If you, there's nothing wrong with doing this method if you can't think of any other more advanced or faster ways of doing it. All right, so let's take a look at another method, slightly more advanced. Method two involves the use of arithmetic, the sum of arithmetic se um, sequences known as arithmetic series. Okay, so method two, method two is known as arithmetic series. So in order to use this method, first of all, you have to know what an arithmetic series is. And secondly, you need to know what the formula is. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at these numbers that we're working with here. We have one plus two plus three plus four, and it goes on all the way to 12. Now, how do we know that this is an arithmetic um, series? Well, every set of consecutive numbers forms a, if you add them, you have an arithmetic series because you have a common difference. Consecutive numbers have a common difference of what? One, right? So from one to two is plus one. From two to three is plus one. Three to four is plus one. So if you add the same number, add or subtract the same number every single time for um, a series, then what you have is an arithmetic series. If you're multiplying the same constant repeatedly, you have an arithmetic, I'm sorry, a geometric series, all right? Okay, so since we have um, an arithmetic series situation here, let's go ahead and write down what the formula is, all right? So the formula is as follows. The formula is sum of n terms of an arithmetic, arithmetic series is n over 2 times a1, the first term, plus the last term a n. If you look at this formula, it's actually summarizing exactly what's happening here. So you have n over 2. How many numbers do we have here? We had 12, right? So 12 over 2 is 6. So we have 6 pairs. And then if you look at the formula, it says a1, the first term, plus the last term. So that's exactly what we did here. If you add the first term and the last term, 1 plus 12, you get 13. And you multiply it by the number of pairs you have, or the number of numbers, divided by 2, that's 6. 13 times 6 is 78. So um, this formula is telling us exactly what we did here, but it's just faster and more concise. Okay? So we apply this formula to this situation that we have um, right here. Um, what do we know? Based on this problem, we know that... Um, the first, well, what is n? n is the number of terms. n is 12. The first term, a1, is 1. And then the nth term, a n, is a12, which is 12. Okay? And then we'll plug it into the formula, s, the sum of 12 ter terms, is going to be n over 2, which is 12 over 2, times a1, 1, plus a n, 12. All right, and that yields 12 over 2 is 6, 6 times 13, which is what we have here, and that gives us 78. So this is a much faster method if you can identify that you're dealing with an arithmetic series and you remember what the formula for the sum of n terms of an arithmetic series is, okay? And then the last one, is the most advanced one, which is the fastest one, okay? So method three involves realizing what the shortcut is to add n consecutive numbers starting from one, okay? So it's just the sum of consecutive numbers from one. Some people have this memorized. If you go to, if you're taking advanced calculus, you need to know what your, your series on formulas are. So this is basically one of the series that you need to know. And you need to know what the formula is for that particular series. Okay. So the formula for method three is just a special case of method of formula two for method two. All right. So the deal is as follows. If you have the sum of n consecutive numbers starting from 1, so 1 plus 2 plus da 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 da, all the way to n, the sum is simply n times 1 plus n over 2. 
That's the formula for the sum of n consecutive numbers starting from 1. All right, so let's apply this formula to this particular situation that we're dealing with here. So for this particular um, situation, uh, n is going to be 12, right? Since we're adding uh, 12 consecutive numbers starting from 1. So for this problem, n is equal to 12. So our sum is simply going to 1 plus 2 plus da, 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 all the consecutive numbers all the way to 12. It's just going to be 12 times 1 plus 12 over 2. All right, and then when you do the calculations, you have, um, let's see what we have here. Um, we have 12 times 13 over two, and then uh, you can divide two into 12, two goes into 12 six times, and it will basically add up with, end up with what we had before. So two goes here one, two goes here six, and you have 6 times 13, and your final answer is going to be 78. All right, so this is the fastest method. This is the next, and then the longest method is this one right here. So whichever method works for you, um, go ahead and employ that method. Remember that when you're taking the ACT, time is of the essence. You have about one minute or less to solve each problem. So the faster you can solve a problem, the better it is for you and remember you can use a calculator but it is also possible to solve the entire all the problems in the ACT math section without the use of a calculator so it's just something taking the time to watch this presentation I really appreciate it you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of um, for preparation for your ACTs do give us a thumbs up we appreciate your feedback don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates the remainder of this series if you have any questions or comments um, or any special requests to get you ready for the ACT just press uh, place your comments in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to assist more support resources can be found at our website at madgoserve.com to check it out thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day goodbye